Hello everyone. Um, having just made a couple of videos uh, using stencils with luscious powders and one with shaving foam and the other one with my homemade embossing paste, I thought I would just show you the difference between the effects that the two mediums give. Now this is a, a Lavinia stencil and I used exactly the same mix of luscious powder and water on both of these. This one is the shaving foam. This one is my homemade embossing paste and you can probably see there is quite a difference. Obviously the paste has left a lovely texture whereas the shaving foam is pretty flat because the shaving foam is just the thing that supports the colour. So what I thought I would do today is to just show you the way my mind works as far as using the two different effects from a very similar uh, technique, really. Here's another um, Lavinia. Um, you can see the difference between these two is actually much more marked because there's far more surface covered. This one is very subtle, very pale, and this one is very vibrant, very bold. So I think I will use these two papers um, first and just show how I would approach using them in a card. Here, these are just mop-up pieces that I used with the shaving foam. So that's just a surface just dabbed into the, the shaving foam and left to dry and then rubbed off. So I've got various of those. So those are often handy, which are toning pieces to go with um, another um, piece of, of stenciling or whatever. So I may be using some of that. I haven't absolutely decided. But my thought is this. With this effect, much more subtle, this would be much more of a background piece. So that would be a background and there would be something interesting on top of it. This one is so fab, I think I'd like to, you know, highlight some of this in its own right because it is so lovely. So I would like to see more of that as a feature on a card and maybe this much more in the background, subtle. So I've got out, I thought to go with these leaf, leafy things, I would have butterflies. Uh, well, winged creatures, shall we say, because this one is a, a damselfly or a dragonfly or some, some such. I'm not absolutely sure. And I don't think, actually, looking at it now, I don't think that body actually belongs. I'll have another look in a minute. That one looks as if it's so, say, got a body already, doesn't it? I must have picked that one up. I, think I must have another dragonfly somewhere. Anyway, what I thought was... If I cut a square from here, and I like this corner probably the best, I thought I would put a butterfly on, and I got out two from this set. It's the um, the Sizzix. Don't know if they're called anything special, but they're sort of layered butterflies. So I thought I would use one of those, and um, I was tossing up between the small one or the medium sized one. And I think the medium sized one is going to win. I think it is. So let's just get started. I've envisaged this one going onto a square card base. And I envisage this one going onto a rectangular one. Okay, let me cut a square from this. And for that, I will use one of my, which I haven't come out, one of my press cut dies. I hope I don't knock the camera for six. Oops, a daisy. Yes, I did. Right, here's my press cut dies. So I thought I would use um, a square of that. 
too big. That might be quite a nice size, but let's have this one. And I'll have a larger one as a frame, I think. Could even have a larger one again with some of that background as a, as a frame of the frame. Right, let me just cut, let me just cut one of these. And I don't actually like cutting um, th those kind of ones because they get flattened. So I could, um, rather than die cutting, just trim whatever shape I want from there. Right. Here's what I found. Oh, there you go again. Why do you keep talking to me in the middle of these things? I don't, I don't know what you find interesting in what I'm saying, that you want to have a chat with me. Right, there's that. Let's cut a white one. And here's a piece of card I can cut this from. Poor old Mr. Siri. I think he must be lonely, don't you? Wants to keep having a chat with me. Right. There is my... Because what I was thinking, you see, I could use one of these ones as a frame again, if I wanted to, with dimension. We'll see. We'll see. Don't know how it's going to go yet. Now, I'm thinking about this. I think that would look quite nice, but what I would like to do to link this butterfly in with the background is to cut another one from this so that the little bits and pieces that I stick onto this butterfly match with what's on there. I could do it either from um, this or I could do it from this. Perhaps this might be an idea. Who knows? Let's try. Let's try cutting it from this. All right. Because when I've finished and my desk is kind of messy, I mop up as well a lot of things. I've got all sorts of backgrounds here that are just tidy ups. Let's see. Right. Now I can use that as another butterfly with white trimmings on, can't I? Right, let's just stick this together. Right, this one, it's got a little bit to come out here, a little bit to come out there. These all add a little bit of interest, all these little gaps. Let's just glue it down. And I file these things away in my drawers in colours. I've got a tower that's um, let's get this in the right place. It took me ages the first time I got these dies. But actually, the positions where they're to be stuck are actually highlighted on the actual die itself. So if you are struggling... There's little tiny marks where the bits go. I want another one to go up here. So this piece. Let's just knock that little bit out. Put this bit on. I must say I was playing around for ages. I hadn't spotted that they've got these uh positional markings on there right there's a bit more that's this one i think it's probably a good idea to do it from the piece that has got more color on um i can try the other the other thing later right and this one goes just there okay and there is a body which got left behind here. All right, let's just glue the body. There we are. It's 
There we go. So. Where did I put my card base? Here it is. So that would be, I think I'd probably put a few little jewels on the, the butterfly as well, just to brighten them up a little bit. So that was my idea for that one, whereas where this one is more in the background with the butterfly being a bit more prominent. Okay, I'll stick that together presently. Now the second one is this one. And this one, as I say, is it's much more vivid, much more prominent. So I'm going to cut a strip from this. So move that one out of the way. Let's just tidy up the edge. Right now, cut down here. And I am thinking probably about yay wide. And we'll see how much I want by the, the width of my of my card. Here's my piece of cardboard of the card I've cut to make my card. So I'll just score that down. I've just put marks down the places where I do most folding. It's just so much easier than searching along here for the um, the exact place. Making sure that the corners are absolutely in line before you score. Lots of people said, oh, my card's not straight. Not really straight. It's all wonky. Right, I'm thinking this time of having a band across my card like this and my dragonfly so my dragonfly i think i will do likewise i can't pick it up i will use um the color for the background and a white one for the top so i think i'll do the same thing use some of this as my background so let's cut out our background dragonfly I'm hoping that this one is going to show show off much more of the the strip of embossing. Right, so there's the background. Hopefully not so much of that one will be seen. So now we'll cut out um, the filigree part, the top. going to look like but this, I'm hoping it's going to be acceptable I don't know what the make of this dragonfly is either I've had a lot of them so so long it's uh, I've kept a lot of packaging got them stored under my bed right let's see what this looks like on top of there that's quite pretty, isn't it? I don't know if I actually like this. Let me try a white background as well. I think it's, it's, there's too much it's too much colour. Let's try a white background as well. I could always do it the other way around for um, another card. Right, let's have a look. I 
think that that is better. I may put a little luster on that. But just let's have a look at these two side by side and see what we think. This one is subtle with the butterfly. This one. Shows off the embossing more. I'm going to decorate this butterfly a little bit more. I find he looks a little bit flat being in the plain card. But um, I might put some little jewels on there. Put a bunch of them up here somewhere. That's just some sort of really tiny ones. Let's have a look. Oh, this is going to do, this is going to help a lot, I think. I'll try and give him a bit more symmetrically, I think. May put a few more, I think I will. Just make it a bit more pretty. I want to give more emphasis to the butterfly and the background in this one. Here we go. I will join them together. I will add them to my Facebook page and my, this one might have a little, I think he might have a couple of, perhaps a couple of pearls or something. Slightly larger ones than that, I think. Let's try these, this is a nicer size. See what these would look like. Yes, I think that would look nice, don't you? Yeah, have one for his head as well. I'll actually stick the body to the to the backdrop, won't it? Right. <laughs> My mind wanders off, I'm afraid. So, I will finish them and maybe add a sentiment. But the subtle one, put it in the background. The pretty one. Make a feature of it, as ever. Thank you so much for watching.